When you send your child out to play soccer, baseball, or any other sport, you expect them to be safe. But a lightning strike seemingly out of the blue severely hurt a young boy in our area just a couple of weeks ago. And just moments ago, we received the 911 call from that day. You're scared. It's okay. Are you hurt? Hi, I'm sorry. We just had a kid hit by lightning at the Field of Dreams. Um, we're at soccer practice, and lightning struck down and hit a, hit a child, a young boy maybe about the age of 10. And today we got an update on that boy, Alexander Herman. His family filed a lawsuit against the soccer league and the Lake Travis Youth Association for $10 million. In that lawsuit, we learned Alex cannot speak, hear, or even move. The family's attorney telling us Alex was directly hit in the stomach by the bolt of lightning and he will be transferred back to Austin in the Dell Children's Medical Center. Until now, the family has been living out of a Ronald McDonald house in Dallas. And the family's attorney says the money they're seeking is meant to help with medical bills, which are already piling up. We'll take a closer look at that issue just ahead. But the lawsuit raises a lot of questions like, what sort of regulations govern these kinds of sports leagues in active weather? KXA and investigator Robert Maxwell has been looking into that. Well, Shannon and Robert, let's zero in on a key point in the lawsuit. It contends the defendants, quote, committed acts of negligence by failing to comply with industry standards regarding lightning safety. And those are just guidelines, just standards, unlike rules to prevent overcrowding of public places, for example. When it comes to weather and youth sports leagues, there is no official oversight. Now, the closest thing we found to a lightning safety law here in the U.S. comes from the National Lightning Safety Institute in Colorado. It worked with, worked with groups to establish safety certifications. Despite the absence of formal safety regulations, the attorney who filed the lawsuit, Mark Levin, says he can still prove negligence. He'll argue around industry standards regarding lightning, the kind promoted by the National Weather Service, like in this online video. Keep a watchful eye to the sky and head to safety at the first sign of a developing storm. Those standards lay out having an emergency plan for those outdoors, including where to shelter and knowing first aid. Named in the lawsuit, the Lake Travis Youth Association. Its weather policy incorporates the basic standards, reading, Coaches, it's your call. If you hear thunder, get your kids and yourself off of the field. Wait 30 minutes with no thunder before going back out onto the fields. The policy page makes no mention of another important standard, though, having a designated weather watcher on the field, someone who's using a weather radio or a mobile app. We found several free severe weather apps online. The association's page also includes a link to severe weather recommendations for referees. It was written, though, in 2003 and makes only a general reference to heating community warning systems. As for a lightning detection system, the privately owned Field of Dreams facility where Alex was hurt doesn't have one and there's no law in Texas that says it has to. And nearby school athletics fields within the Lake Travis ISD, for one, do have these devices. I've learned that they're fairly new, actually. A district spokesperson tells me today one was installed at the high school in that ISD in 2012 and at the district's two middle schools just last year. Well, Robert, how can people know that their local school districts have invested in these type of detectors? Well, we didn't find a list, so we went ahead and compiled one with this story tonight online at KXAN.com. So we have a list there of lightning-protected districts in schools, Robert. Okay, thank you very much, Robert. And David Yeomans joins us for some perspective about that storm. David, that lightning bolt really did seem to just come out of the blue. Just tragic, and that's exactly what it's called in the meteorological community, a bolt from the blue. We've mm -hmm. got an image for you from the National Weather Service. This is a screen grab of a map of Austin out toward Bee Cave and Lakeway when the actual strike occurred. Now, you notice we've highlighted the parent storm, as it's called. That's that yellow and red heavy rain and also lightning-producing thunderstorm right there, but also the field of dreams. You see that little slash right there? That is a negative indicator indicating a negative charge that was the actual bolt of lightning and you can see it was three miles away from that parent storm so those folks unfortunately had little warning of that tragic situation coming now we do always warn you when thunder roars stay indoors we've got all kinds of lightning safety rules for you and tips as we continue to be in thunderstorm season you can find those right now on the weather blog at kxan.com